Hey everybody, we are Martin, Robert, and Francis, and this is Snakes and Otters, a pointless discussion of eternal questions. Get ready, we're about to live in your head, rent-free. Hi everybody, welcome back to Snakes and Otters. This is episode 25. Wow, silver episode. Quarter away to 100. So I am Martin. I'm Robert. And I'm Francis. And for episode 25, we are back at the beautiful... St. Minard Arch Abbey in St. Minard, Indiana. Uh, we are very, very grateful for the hospitality of the uh, Arch Abbey here. It's just been wonderful to mm-hmm. be here. Uh, it's a As beautiful always. place. It's a beautiful always. place. Yes. So this is an Our Heroes episode, and I'm pretty excited for this one. Uh, we're going to talk about Ulysses S. Grant. U.S. Grant. That's right. So... You know, Grant is one of those guys that there's a lot written about him, um, but there has been a trend in the last, let me say, about 15 years, probably. Oh, of I, I think it's a little earlier than that, but uh, it's been a while now. Uh, in fact, a lot of this, uh, there's been a d- deliberately, you could easily plot how it goes since since Grant wrote his own memoirs, right? Uh, at right at right just before he died. Uh, there has been a revision of him in, in all sorts of different ways in scholarship. And I think only now are we finally reaching the way it should be balanced uh, and grateful. Because yeah. I think he was he was dismissed in too many ways. Yes, he was absolutely dismissed. I absolutely seen never, as never as a general. Failure Although as a rarely, as a, yeah. rarely as a general. Cold Harbor still haunted him mm-hmm. and his reputation in many yes. ways. But... Uh, there's been, over the last few years, a, a revisiting of his historical reputation, both as a general and as a, uh, a president, and there's a lot to admire here. Yes, there, a lot. There's a lot um, that I personally find uh, uh, fascinating and worthy of study, worthy of thinking through about U.S. Grant. Well, yeah, we, we kind of go back to that universal question that we talk about, and one of the things is, is this a good man, a virtuous man, a person who is worth admiring? That's what our heroes means, is that this is a person who's worth admiring, and here's why we think so. Yeah. And there, it abounds with Grant. There's plenty. Yeah. Yep. So, Robert? <coughs> yes. Comments, ideas, <laughs> thoughts? Do you want to put well, you on the spot? So, with Grant, uh, he is an interesting figure for a lot of reasons. Uh, I think almost anybody who was uh, a major military figure who becomes president is going to be just like an Eisenhower. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, or Washington, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, right. You know, there's a lot of grist for the discussion mill there. But the interesting thing about him is the reputation that he had during life, after death, uh, and then this more, as, as Francis was saying, more balanced look. You know, during the war, he had a reputation of being a drunk, uh, which is an unfair accusation. Absolutely, yeah. He only, uh, uh, he, there's only two, according to Shelby Foote anyway, who did a lot of research on it, he only had two episodes, one of which, the only real one, was during the Vicksburg campaign. It's when nothing was going on. Apparently, Grant's, yeah. only time Grant ever had any drinking issues was when he was bored uh, and uh, when his family wasn't around, and when his and when his he, wife his wife when his yes. wife was not around, he uh, missed he, Julia terribly. terribly. In mm-hmm. fact, that's one of the more reasons for him to be such a good hero is he had a great love affair with his wife, uh, and he he was a model of a of an excellent husband and father. Uh, marriage was one of his successes in life. Mm-hmm. That and war, as Shelby yes. Foote against one said. That's really, yes. those were his only Business two. Business certainly was not. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's really his only two successes. But wow, what successes they both were. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, the that is an unfair. Because, you know, what, is anybody who, who has anybody in a family that has, drinks a bit extra, perhaps more than they should, it's really easy to get labeled with that. And like any negative label, it'll stick with you. That's right. All it takes is one, one unfortunate or two unfortunate incidents. Yeah. Right. And you're branded. And Grant, Generally, when he did do it, he is in private. That's correct. Right. Yeah, he, so, he recognized his position yeah, very early he, on. He knew that it could get him. Yeah. And he knew the best mm-hmm. thing for me to do is to be away from everybody and else. There, and he had enemies, uh, as, oh, he, as any powerful person would. 
because they envied his success. Because let's face it, by the time he achieves the pinnacle in you know early 1864, uh, how many others have gone through this you know amazing mill and failed yep. terribly? And many of them were very politically connected. Yeah. And many other people who were also politically connected envied his success because he was the right person for that. Lincoln knew that. Halleck thought he was an idiot at first, yeah. but eventually came to understand that understand, he was the right yeah, guy. He was the right guy. And, the and boss I, had arrived, as they said. Yeah. You know, it's it. he was, I think it was Shelby Foote also that said it, a singular faith in success. Oh, yes. Grant. Is that, well, he goes, knew they could win, mm-hmm. so there was there was no reason to doubt their ability. And that was what was different between him, McClellan, Hooker, and these other failed generals. Well, yeah. And, you know, we, we talked about uh, this aspect in the, the show prep. You know, one of the things that stood out, I think we all agreed, was that they, the difference between somebody like a Grant and the people that he surrounded himself with, mm-hmm. like Sherman and Sheridan, uh, and those like McClellan is that they viewed war differently. Yes. Very much so. You know, Grant, Grant's, Grant and his people were the only ones who got it right. But they were visionaries at the time. Right. But it was... He was the one that saw taking Confederate cities, con- taking Confederate territories, was of limited value. Irrelevant in many ways. The only real object was to destroy Lee in the field. Mm-hmm. That's the only way... The Confederacy would capitulate. The, that is a post Vicksburg attitude, though, correct? No, I think that's him all the way through. It's he. There must be victory, mm-hmm. and again, he had that faith that the Union armies would win. And he was often criticized for for thinking that because of sheer numbers and resources. That's an unfair assessment on Grant, uh, because that's not how he actually behaved. Uh, he he was not somebody. He was often called the butcher. Cold Harbor gives him that. Yeah, that was a mistake. He always had said that himself, but that was really not his tactics. Yeah, what was different about Grant is whereas the other guys before would get a bloody nose and they'd run back to and hide under their bed, Grant n- never stopped. He kept going forward. And yes, he, I mean, if you think about it, uh, all the way to Petersburg, uh, Grant suffers defeat after defeat after defeat. The Wilderness, Spotsylvania, Cold Harbor, there are, tech, there are tactical Confederate... Tactical reversals yeah, of correct. the Union cause. That's correct. But he never stops. It never changed the strategy. It never changed a thing. Basically is, you know... And that's why the, the men believed in him. That's correct. I mean, they, they loved McClellan. He made them soldiers. Mm-hmm. But Grant made them winners. That's right. And so um, they knew when he stood there among them, mm-hmm. not looking like a general. <laughs> right. <laughs> looking like a, just another private. It, well, he was notorious he was, for standing there on the march. And he'd be and he'd be there on his horse. And he'd just say, keep going, boys. Keep moving. Keep, keep moving. Keep on moving. Keep on moving. Keep on moving. They saw him there. Yeah. He was not hiding in his tent. Yeah. So, but you know, that's... That tenaciousness, that determination, that faith in success, that's part of who he was and part of why I wanted to do Grant as a hero, but there's more. Very much so. There's the presidency. That's where people ding him, and that's not fair. That's yeah. kind of what we're talking and about I think here. that's where Robert was headed, too, was you were talking about a little bit of, of that, of there's more there. In that presidency. Uh, well, I'm not sure which part of what I was saying led you to that. Because I don't, wasn't really thinking about the presidency. Okay. Uh, but he certainly, you know, what I was talking about, uh, the, the couple of things. The first was the the, the alcoholic charge, which mm-hmm. uh, being an alcoholic may or may not have been true yeah. in, in that sense. But uh, it certainly, uh, he was labeled with it when it wasn't really an active part of what was going on. Uh, but I think you probably could still make a case that he was uh, used and and attempted at least to be controlled by the movers and shakers in the in the party uh, at the time, simply because that's what happens with every general that runs. Sometimes 
probably most of the time that's not going to work. He didn't even uh, campaign. <laughs> Well, back yeah, back then they rarely did. Well, I mean, yeah, but he you know, he's he's still doing general stuff, and he said, "Okay, yeah, I'll do it," and he wins. Next thing you know, he's president. Yeah. And again, the, the presidency is part of what leads to this assessment of him as a huge failure, even though he's a a two term president. Almost three. <laughs> Almost three. Yeah, yeah he, he he came he close. Tried, yeah, he thought about seriously running, and but. By then, the party had moved on a bit and wanted somebody different. But, mm-hmm. yes, he didn't know anything about business. Right. And he uh, always said so himself. He yeah. hated it. And he it, could be taken why. advantage of. And the whole gold scandal and things like that really hurt uh, the public perception of him. But he really gave everything he could to protecting the legacy of the victory. He wanted to protect the newly freedmen. Mm-hmm. Uh, he wanted an end to low-level violence in the states. He mm-hmm. didn't want the verdict of the Civil War overturned by low-level domestic terrorism. That's right, which and was he, what the Klan was. Yeah, and so he was fairly successful in initially suppressing the Klan... Um, protecting the freedmen, and he tried to give a real fair shake to the Native Americans as well. Or, in his or, first term, yeah. The second ter- in his second term, things spun out of control very quickly because Grant's no longer in the field commanding troops. That's uh, that was a bridge too far, I think. Yeah, being the president, Com- he- commanding bureaucrats and commanding troops are very different things. That's correct. <laughs> Well, you can shoot the troops if they deserve. You can't do that to your bureaucrats. That might uh, bring about some better behavior, although. Yeah. So, um, that's... All of those things, um, you know, really really draw me into him. You know, um, so I just mentioned a couple of books that I think are part of this new wave of scholarship on him. Um, Ron Chernow's book is probably the newest one. Yeah, that's the one a lot of people have been talking about. It's quite good. It's quite good. Have you finished the whole thing? Yes. Yes. That's no small read. <laughs> it's it's really good. Oh yeah, it's very in depth. Yeah, but I also like a uh, a book Grant by Gene Edward Smith, who coincidentally is also a biographer of Eisenhower. Ah, uh, it's very very good as well. Um. And another one I like is Ulysses S. Grant, Soldier President by Jeffrey Parrott. It's um, it's good. It's the prose is a little purple in that one. Well, but uh, it, it's a really neat reexamination of his life, especially uh, life at West Point, mm-hmm. where he is. He's not the model model soldier like Lee is, right? Um, but he's. The best horseman at the academy, mm-hmm. loves animals, lo- and had been on the back of a horse since he was small. Um, and when he's engaged in something with with a good teacher, he does do well. He does do well. So, um, so those are things that, that just draw me in, and you, you especially mentioned, from those books. You mentioned his book, the good books about him. I still think the one that they all draw on is is Grant's memoirs. Yes, it's and I think that it really even as shortly because he finished it literally days before his death, uh, and his his son went through and basically scrubbed to make sure the dates all worked, but everything else is basically him, and it was an enormous bestseller for years thereafter, and it was well written. It was yeah. balanced. It was fair. Uh, it was he was he. This these are the type of moments where he's not afraid to self-deprecate. I mean, that's where you get yeah. the fact that he regretted that last charge at Cold Harbor. He wrote it. He was he gave his word and he stood behind it. He's willing to say, you know, I shouldn't have done that. Who else does that? Nobody. Grant understood the level to which he was responsible for things, and he never ever passed the buck. That is 
unheard mm-hmm. of in many respects, yeah. especially for a politician, yeah. which eventually he morphs into. I don't think he ever really had his heart there. And he would have said that himself. Uh, but he also knew he was the guy that had to do this. He was the only, he was a unifying force that both sides, because the South came to respect him. They hated Sherman, but Grant, they didn't. They recognized, I think, those essential qualities that we're trying to tease out with him, that he was a good man. He's going to do the right thing. He wants to bring them back into the fold well. Uh, he wants a good reconstruction. Uh, and he mm-hmm. recognizes he has, to, he, he has to play the hard ass sometimes uh, to do this. But one way or the other, he's going to do this in such a way that the, that the country, he's taking, he's taking Lincoln's idea of a unified country and running with it. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought up Lincoln. He he's profoundly affected by Lincoln. Yeah, absolutely. Because in 1864, in particular, in 65, they work enormously closely together. Yes, mm-hmm. and that's you, you can't help but be dazzled by Lincoln at this point. Uh, he's no longer seen as the bumpkin. You know, this is you know 1864 and 60. You know, he was reelected in an, in an enormous response. Uh, by this time, he's fully flowered as the genius politician he is. Grant absorbs some of this. He's mm-hmm. present for a lot of this. And I think that's, to the extent that Grant was good as a president, he probably owes that to Lincoln. He did want to continue Lincoln's legacy. He did feel like that was, I, I think he felt like that was his obligation. Right. To well, pick up Lincoln's Also legacy. because it was the right thing to do. Yes. See, Grant is not, he's not, he's a leader. He's always a leader. And he's, he's going to do something because this is the right way to do it. He's not going to leave it to somebody else. And I think that has that's one of the reasons we love him so much. So, Robert, another touch of bourbon for you, sir? Yes, my glasses somehow mysteriously oh, become empty. No. Please pour him a, a, a touch of basil hay. That's there. right. We've got let a me, small Let touch. me uncork this, of course. Yes, we get the... It's that's the, good. It's the good stuff, yeah. as we've said. Yeah, it, it's well, tasty. even a bad bourbon yes, is still bourbon. bourbon. That's right. Very, very tasty. I don't think I've ever had a bad bourbon. Yeah. I've had bourbons that well, I've not enjoyed well, as much as of, others. It's kind of like Bigfoot. They say they're out there, but nobody can ever tell you if they've seen them. Same thing. Yeah. Not reliably. Not reliably. Yeah. That's right. But generally, we avoid the $9 quart stuff, too. Well, even a, even a very old Barton is not a bad bourbon, it's surprisingly. Right. Yeah. It's a bargain bourbon, bourbon for the right reasons. That's okay. Yeah. I mean, it's a good mixing bourbon for sure. Yes, sure. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. A basil Hayden should never be mixed. <laughs> no. Matter of fact, most of the, matter of fact, I don't think any of the stuff that we have tried on our shows has ever been a mixing bourbon. Well, with the exception of Makers, Makers is a mixing bourbon to me. Yeah, and you know that was still darn smooth stuff. Yeah, it was better than I had really expected because I've never just uh, never really had a whole lot of it and just never been my cup of tea, so to speak. Yeah. So, listeners, I hope you're hearing that uh, the ice in the glasses clinking and uh, the cork coming out of the basil. Yeah. So, so Robert, uh, your impressions about Grant's presidency? Well, I think the criticisms of his presidency, you know, you, I don't think you can get away from the fact that many of them are valid. True. There was yeah. a lot of corruption in his presidency. Yes. His biggest fault you know, wouldn't necessarily be that he was at the center of the corruption, so much as was that he just let it go on or wasn't aware yeah, of it he going was on. Blind to people taking advantage yes because as a general you can keep your circle small uh he ran off all the political generals but as a politician you can't keep your circle small anymore right and it's, you can't ran off be... all the political politicians <laughs> because then you won't have anybody left yeah, there's nobody left so <laughs> which was... necessarily isn't necessarily a bad thing at times i think but yes so he 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 believed the best in people mm-hmm. and just had to live with being wrong that's yeah. very well put. That's probably the best way, I think, of, of phrasing that. Because he couldn't... I don't think he ever really understood people would be the way they were. Uh, right. Because he expected so much out of himself and of others. The, all those that were, would fail him, they, and they did so so shadily. He doesn't even I get know the sense that he, he never expected duplicity. Whether on the battlefield or yeah. uh, in, in politics. You know, he was a, he was not a let's maneuver like Lee, 
so you know maybe this is indicative of his his way of thinking. But he wasn't. He also wasn't just a smash straight ahead either. I mean, no. he wasn't um, sophisticated in the on the battlefield like Lee was. He but wasn't. he played to his own strengths, which yeah. was hit him hard and hit him again until you can't hit him anymore. That's right. Which is not quite the same as just smash ahead. Yeah, he's not a brute uh, by any means. He he's got nuance and he's got subtlety, uh, but he's got tenacity. Well, he he may have nuance and subtlety, but I think he's very much he's he's more so a just a straightforward what you see is what you get. Oh yeah, uh, than anything else. Focused, determined. Yeah. Person. Uh, shortest distance between two points is a straight line for him. Well, he's, he's very uh, much like part. Nelson. You know, never mind the maneuvers; just go straight at him. It's the same thing, yeah. Yeah, you know, and, and in politics, that's not necessarily the best way to go about things. Because there's so much, even at that time, uh, there is so much trading of favors, of quid pro quos that you have to deal with. And that would have been foreign to him as a soldier. And even in business, you know, you're going to find some of that. But as we know, he didn't do well in business. So mm-hmm. I think... Same same fault, uh, basically. Same kind of fault, yeah. yeah. So if there's any fault to be had in him, it's not so much that he uh, had evil intentions as that he just didn't understand that others had them. Yeah. I find it fascinating how his reputation, this goes back to what you were talking about there, Martin, that it's gone up and down over the, over the, the century and a half since all this happened. And I think that deserves some focus on our part, because I think therein lies the entire problem. Uh, Grant is very much a victim of the changing, I don't want to say political, but social um, currents, if you will, yep. over time. And uh, <clears throat> I think there's several things that contribute to that. But I think a lot of this is he was a target. Uh, from the, for the lost causers and the Jim Crows uh, in the South, we've talked a little bit about that. Mm-hmm. That uh, it, you you have to destroy Grant because Grant destroyed you. If you remove Grant, then all of a sudden you're lost. Ca- if you if you tarnish him, then all of a sudden your lost cause is elevated. And I th- mm-hmm. and I think that's that's, that's yep. huge. With this, because people keep people want to revise history all the time, especially when you don't like the outcome. And Grant fought very hard as president to solidify and cement the outcome of the war, and uh, against enormous pressures Mm -hmm. at the time. And what they couldn't do while he's president, they did afterwards. Right. Andrew Johnson wanted nothing to do with any of the amendments. He thought, "Oh, those. Oh, that's a terrible idea." But Grant shepherded all of the post-war amendments through. Well, that's, Link, that's it's Lincoln's influence. He, yeah, there. he believed Lincoln in all understood of that. Uh, there's, this will happen again in 13th, some fashion. The 14th and 15th were all passed and ratified under Grant? 13th was he done under Lincoln. For, he pushed for all of them. Right. I'm not, I don't recall if 14 and 15 were. I think they were all ratified during his presidency. Hmm. Those, at least those two. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he believed in all of them, stood up for all of them, uh, whereas Johnson had no interest. Johnson was ready to basically admit all the southern states right back in immediately and just go to status quo ante before the war. Yeah. Well, and that and let's, let the southern state governments reconstitute themselves in any manner they wanted. And Grant was like, no, that's then all of this bloodshed's for nothing. And we, we must reconstitute these governments in a way that they understand the new reality. Slavery is over. Yeah. The the former slaves are now citizens. We have to move them to a place where they can be full citizens right. we of have our to, nation. We have to assist in their enfranchisement. Yes. Because we recognize that the areas in which they live will never do so willingly. Yes. Right. right. That was very much, uh, that's, that comes through very strongly in the Chernow uh, biography. Uh, th- that, that was a huge part of where Grant was. So uh, those are all very important pieces of what makes him so appealing. But no, it's not his business acumen, that's for sure. Actually, the 15th is the only one that passed in his 
presidency. The 13th was uh, passed in 19, uh, 1865. The 14th in 1868. This was even before the election. Okay. Uh, it was in July. And then the last one was 1870, halfway through his first uh, term. So, now it was proposed in his... That's only one of the three that was proposed and passed in his presidency. So, anyways... But that doesn't mean that Johnson was gung-ho for it. I just wanted to throw that out. Because you know how we are. We like to be accurate about our political statements. It's like when I said Charles II lost his head. And I realized that. It's like, oh, crap. I said that. And it's, on, it's out there in the world now. Yeah. Charles the first. Yeah, it was Charles the first. Charles the first. Charles the Anyways. First. So, but that's also my own OCD. CDO. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, because it, alpha, like, it has to be alphabetized, right? That's right. If you're truly uh, obsessive, it has to be alphabetized. Um, but anyway, sorry to... to, to but, no, that's good stuff. That's good but, stuff. I like that. Um, so, well, guys, we're coming up on about 26 minutes here. Talk quite a bit about Grant. Um, and, and that I, I like that we focused on the presidency. Mm-hmm. Um, it's hard to boil that down. <laughs> There's so much there. Yeah. Uh, in two terms in particular. Well, there's so much going on in the in the country, uh, you know, between what's going on with, with uh, Reconstruction, with uh, the Republicans fighting to keep it, the Democrats wanting to get rid of it, uh, all of those factors. Uh, because again, how long how long is it required, really? You know, there, I mean, those are valid arguments to have. Then you have all of the people taking advantage of his not really either being able to or understanding why he should have to keep an eye on them mm-hmm. and allowing all that corruption going on. Um, the Transcontinental Railroad was completed during his presidency. Yes. You yes. Know, that's not a minor event. That's right. There's a lot of things. So, a lot of things that are done that he doesn't get credit for. And, and I think that's, in many respects, just a terrible shame. Because Grant, one of the reasons we like him so much that he's one of our heroes is that he's a complex person. Uh, he is... He is not always predictable in beyond the fact that you know he's always going to do what he considers to be the right thing. He's like Thomas More. He's going to do what he thinks is right, no matter what the cost. And that's worthy, I think, of uh, admiring. Mm-hmm. And that's probably one it, of the he reasons. He has a broad sense of not necessarily what's right for this community or that community, but what's right for the nation at large. Well, he's a great strategic thinker. Yeah. And uh, and great strategic thinkers are leaders, and I think that's what what his claim to fame really should be. He was he was that. Cool, super cool, super cool. So, so the real question would be, not the real question, but a question, uh, because we've seen a lot of figures, especially from the Civil War, because it is, as we've mentioned before in other shows, it is still controversial today. Mm-hmm. As to what it was fought over, why and when, and who chose to do what and where, and which seems so unbelievable to me that we can still argue over those things today, but we do. We do. Uh, so people are often being rehabilitated and reviled, and uh, you know, after being in a good light. I mean, you know, we've talked about how you know, any year now we're going to have all of the Washington and Jefferson monuments taken down because they were slave owners. Uh, so and maybe in another 50 years or 100 years, people are going to turn around and say, no, that Grant, he was a real idiot. Those guys in the 20, early 21st century were, were wrong. And that's one of the things that's interesting about history is that just like where the hoopa jubes go, everybody's got one. <laughs> everybody's got one. Uh, you know, it's just... Uh, yeah. The, 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 one of the good things, cool things about Grant and the reason that there is so much scholarship, not just... Uh, this tremendous memoir that he leaves behind, Mm -hmm. a very honest memoir, but what he filed as general of the armies or his presidential, a lot of that stuff still is out there. Mm -hmm. It exists. The dispatches, the war dispatches, that's all out there uh, to be examined. And it has been many, many times. You know, I bet, this is a little bit of a tangent since we're actually... Uh, running much shorter than most of our episodes do, I'll, I'll go ahead and bring this up. Um, you might be able to lay at his administration, if not him directly, the creation of the modern superstate, mm-hmm. in the sense that 
the, you know, and part of this is reconstruction, which started before him, but, and also the running of the war, keeping all those records and what have you. But you know, the bureaucracy loves paperwork, <laughs> yeah. as, as some of us well know. Uh, you know, the two of us are heavily involved in the church. God knows we love our bureaucracy. Yes. Uh, but when we think about the 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 way the government is, how it's become what we would consider bloated, certainly the founders would consider it incredibly bloated. Yeah. They'd look at it and say, what, did you not read the Constitution? <laughs> Why are you doing that? But uh, really a lot of the bureaucracy probably can be laid at him because of the things that were started there. Now, it's the seeds. It's certainly not all of it. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but I think Reconstruction and letting that go on and, and, and just a lot of the different things that you could probably lay there. Again, it's very seminal in form, but uh, I think it starts there yeah. in earnest. Yeah. Because pre-Civil War, I think the government looked very much like the founders wanted it to look. Uh, very small federal government, very, uh, I don't want to say inactive, but not at the forefront of everybody's daily lives like it is today. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and funding the war made Lincoln make some decisions that expanded federal reach. Yes. Um, and, and, and Grant then has to realize, uh, like during the gold scandal, sometimes direct federal action is what's necessary to take. Genie's out of the bottle by that time. Yeah. Well, the problem is once you take it the first time, yeah. it's the justification of taking it the next time with even less reason. <laughs> and so by the time well, you less get Less deliberation. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, 150 years later from the Civil War, you know, now the federal government is the first place we, we look for answers, which yeah. just... You know, once you take that step into bad behavior... It gets easier every time after That's that. right. That's right. You know, the first sin is the hardest. That's right. Not that necessarily government, federal government doing stuff is a sin. Just saying that the first time you do something that maybe you ought not to, it's it's harder. It breaks down the barriers after that. It does. So. Slippery slope, we've called it. <laughs> because as we said in our prior episode, it is easier to destroy than it is to create. Yep. Yep. So... Well, uh, this has been good stuff because it really drew out those concepts about him that are attractive to me. And while I've read three biographies of him, um, and, and we'll, well, I plan to start another because Bruce Catton also has uh, a series on Grant. He's a tremendous... A series? Yes. He, he's wow. a tremendous uh, Civil War historian. He is. And so I've got Grant Moves South hmm. uh, on my shelf coming up pretty soon to read um but again this this picking up lincoln's legacy trying to fulfill it being a flawed man being that man that trusted everyone that maybe he shouldn't have but he didn't know any other way right you know this is a i think a good episode that really exemplifies uh what we've said in prior episodes about how this is not to answer every question or to to you know, dive as deep as it is possible to dive. Yeah, in any you particular. can't with something this big. The whole point big. of this is to get the listeners to think about this stuff and maybe go and do a little bit of reading go and do, thinking on Read some of these books. Spark and some ideas. See if, and, yeah. See if Grant means the same to you after reading about him that he does to me, that this exemplar of determination, this exemplar of uh, tenacity in a great cause, uh, and, and, and believing in yourself, that simple faith in success, all the, that great stuff. Let's close with one of my favorite quotes from Grant. So years ago, we did a uh, road trip to Shiloh, which unfortunately you did not get to go on that one. Yes. That's right, yeah. But it was at Shiloh, after the first day when they got their butts kicked, Sherman comes up. Love this. And I forget what Sherman says, but it's basically, we got our butts kicked today. We've had... We've had Hell's Own Day, haven't we, Grant? Yes. And what Grant says, we'll whoop him tomorrow, though. Whoop him tomorrow. We've had so, Hell's Own Day. That is the tomorrow. epitome of what you were talking about with him. Yeah. Whoop him tomorrow. And Sherman, it, there's again, three more episodes on somebody like Sherman. He's really fascinating. Yes. Um, but, you know, he, he's a prickly guy. Found, found reasons not to like people. 
Eventually, we even find a reason to distance himself a little from Grant. But his famous saying was, Grant stood me, by me when I was crazy. I stood by him when he was drunk. Now we stand by each other always. Mm-hmm. And that's the kind of person Grant was. That you could take somebody that's a little squirrely like Sherman and bind him to you. Sure. And turn that belief in yourself into a belief in him. Well, and it, it made him probably a, a much better commander mm-hmm. when he was sent off on independent command. Yeah. Yep. And again, that's what a good leader does. Yeah. He makes the people around him better than they already were. Yeah. Grant trusted him enough that, like, well, I don't know if this Marshall sees a good idea or not, but okay, do it. Yeah. Do it. Yeah, because in a way, you know, again, we're, we're kind of extending this, but in a way, that is not his philosophy on how to wage war. Because he was doing exactly what uh, Grant thought that we didn't need to do, which was conquering the territory. I mean, yes, he did. He was opposed, but not. It wasn't Lee's yeah. army. It wasn't one of the major yeah. um, uh, armies. He basically ignored. Uh, it was Hood at that time, wasn't it? That was that was his opposite number uh, uh, for a while. It was, for a while, yeah. Well, Johnston. Johnston eventually, it was Johnston. Uh, yeah, that's that's right. right. It was Hood until Hood well, was no longer available. Well, well it, it was before, after the Battle of Franklin. Yeah, when Hood just basically decimated, and I mean, no, beyond decimated. Uh, he destroyed an entire he, Confederate he, army charging in Sherman. Yes. That's exactly right. And yeah. I, I think it may have been Thomas at the time. I think this was before Sherman took command, if I remember right. Uh, it was Thomas versus. But Thomas and Sherman no, served no, together. No, Hood was, Hood was uh, in command around Atlanta. Oh, well, yeah, that was, that was there. after Franklin, though. He was, not yeah. in, he was not in full command. He was. I think he was back to corps command at this time. Uh uh, um, he after Franklin, he was removed and, and demoted very very quickly, because they realized you know he was a fighter, but he was well, he was not, in charge of Atlanta. The the yeah he, he wasn't he didn't have a, uh, an army in the field. That's right? exactly it. Yeah, he yeah. was in charge of the defenses of Atlanta. Basically, that's a demotion. He was yeah. He At was, that time, that would have been considered a major. Well, that's right because he basically he I mean he destroyed uh, the Confederate army by attacking at Franklin, Tennessee. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I, I cannot remember the statistics, but they're appalling, unbelievably appalling. And it's amongst the officer corps that they could not replace. And that's when they realized, oh, my gosh, what have we done? Because they're not fighting Rosecrans anymore. Or they're, they're acting, and this is not Braxton Bragg. You cannot just go in and beat them up. This is George Thomas, who's already, you know, he proven, but I don't care. Come on, bring it on. I got you. And he did. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and but the whole march to the sea though wasn't about defeating an army. No, it was it what really it was about demoralizing. It was defeating a nation. Yeah, and yeah, it, it's Sherman. Well, yeah, again, Sherman's another hero of mine. We've actually got him on the schedule to eventually do yeah, this because for him. he uh, he saw that the plantation owners started all this. And they've not, to much of a degree, been touched. True. Yeah, they have not paid. Was, Especially in Georgia there, was, yeah. So it was time to take the war to their front steps. Yes. And Atlanta was and a them, major, major uh, part of the reason they were still able to stay in the war. Because it was far enough away to where it was literally untouched until Sherman. Yeah. So they were the center for manufacturing. Uh, they were, you know, they were major crucial. Railroad hub. Yeah, yeah, they were crucial so, to the whole war effort. Yeah. So that was a it was a major blow. So it wasn't exactly a uh, uh, total uh, you know lark or anything, but it wasn't an army. Yeah. Yeah. But it was still an important blow to the uh, yeah. Confederate cause. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a ton to go into with with Sherman in that campaign and what it was about and everything. But we'll save it. That's for not another Grant. <laughs> yeah, we're but just the the trust that Grant placed in him. Yes, and, and Sherman coming it was critical. into Grant's orbit. Well, and, yeah, and because Sherman the West did. was handled. Grant didn't need to worry about the yeah. West. That had great strategic value for him. Yeah, right. yeah there was no one left in the West uh, right. after taking care of Vicksburg and then uh, Hood taking care of himself. Well, that's right, yeah. exactly. So. Thanks for being with us here every week at Snakes and Otters, a pointless discussion of eternal questions. Be sure to spread the word on your social media accounts. Follow us and retweet us. 
We are on Instagram and on Twitter at Snakes and Otters. Let your friends know that they can find us on Podbean, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, and on YouTube. Just search Snakes and Otters Podcast to find us. And please, remember to leave us your comments and reviews. It helps people find us. And you can always send us an email at snakesandotterspodcast at gmail.com. I'm Martin. I'm Robert. And I'm Francis. Catch us next week. Same snake time, same otter channel. <laughs>